Hello and welcome back Supermums. In today's video we're going to be looking at Christmas family traditions. Why they're important for building lasting memories and making Christmas easier. So before we get into the real content of today, I just want to let you know that Supermum Society have created a free printable download that will help you plan your dream Christmas. It's linked down below, so click the link, get it today, and make sure you have a magical Christmas. So my first few Christmases as an adult was as a stepmom, and as amazing as that was, and how much like, I enjoyed doing all the bits and stuff for, for my stepchildren, um, children feels the wrong word because they were like early teenagers at this point, it wasn't really until I had my own that it really, I really got excited about it and started to genuinely love Christmas. Last year was the first Christmas with my daughter and I just had this plethora of amazing ideas and things that I really wanted to include in our Christmas. And actually one of the things that came out was that having some Christmas traditions for me was really important. I didn't feel like I'd had any as a kid, or at least none that had particularly sunk in. There were some in like the later years, uh, like pancakes on Christmas Day morning, and games on Boxing Day. But I couldn't really remember like structured home Christmases. Uh, we had a lot of Christmases in different places and Santa always did our stockings in the same way but to have these special magical bits that you maybe see in the movies, those kind of things, I didn't remember any of them and I really wanted to have some that we had as a family, as a new little family of three and that maybe my daughter would have with her kids one day or with her family if she doesn't have kids. Please have kids, I wanna be a granny. Hi there, my name is Fiona Hill and I am a businesswoman and a mum of one little boy who is just about to turn three. And our Christmas tradition is to wear silly hats like this one and our Christmas pyjamas and read some beautiful books um, like this one right here which is a Christmas bear. Um, you can see that this one has been well loved so we read any Christmas books and get excited and in the Christmas spirit. But it was just, I was willing to put a lot of work into the traditions I decided that I wanted to have. And actually, it came out that for future Christmases, it's actually going to make things easier. Because she was quite small and she wasn't particularly mobile, I think she started crawling just after Christmas. It was much easier to get them done and do all the making of the things that are then going to be our Christmas traditions in the future. And now I've got them and I'm going into this Christmas knowing that there are certain things that are going to happen that are going to be part of our Christmas day. And when people are coming to us trying to book events in, I'm like, we've already got a rough structure. You're going to have to kind of fit around those. So it's actually making my Christmas planning much easier as well. Hi, my name is Joanne and I'm mother of two girls. Our Christmas tradition for the past four years has been to spend Christmas Eve with our friends. My best friend is German so she celebrates Christmas slightly different to us. So we take part in her traditional German style Christmas on Christmas Eve. It's amazing. It's like my favourite part of Christmas. It seems that actually the simpler the Christmas tradition, the better and more memorable it is. We have quite a few. And when I say traditions, we've done them for one year and I plan to do them forever. <laughs> A lot of people do the Christmas Eve box. Uh, we took this one step further and have a Christmas Eve chest. I actually got this on Spock and it was an ex like set company. It was a like a marketing company and they'd used it in a set. So it was like a treasure chest type box. I then sort of glammed it up, made it a bit more Christmassy, put um, our family name Christmas Eve box on the top. At the moment, we only plan to have one little person, but if we have another little person, I didn't want to put her, just her name on it and then be like, oh, actually, there's other people added to this family and we now can't use this amazing box that I've like created. 
So I've made it a family one as opposed to everyone having like their own specific one and then we can't get one that matches later on or anything. It wasn't just about the Christmas Eve chest massive thing that I've got. I mean, literally it was like, it's like this big. It's also been great for packing the Christmas decorations in, but it sat in our, in our sitting room looking really nice and festive. It became part of the decorations. And then inside it, we had a number of things. So Christmas Eve, our church does like a, a family friendly midnight mass that's during the day. So we went and did that. And then we came back and opened the Christmas Eve box. We had a plate for all the Santa based goodies. So to put our carrot on for Rudolph and the mince pie or a cake or something and a, and a drink. And it's all lovely and engraved. It was a present from my daughter's auntie. So it's a really special family item and it's wooden. So it's gonna last the test of time. I didn't want a China one because it risked being broken. And I think that's really important to remember with family traditions, try and think of things that are gonna be durable. This is like, yeah, I think like that thick piece of wood with the, the details burnt in. So the paint's not gonna chip off, it's not gonna get smashed and we will have this item for a very long time and I hope my daughter will have it when she's grown up too. We also had the Christmas pyjamas. I did look at getting a whole family set but I seem to only be able to find patpat, patpat.com, something like that. And when I went to order them, you had to order them like three months in advance and they came from America and there were mixed reviews on the quality. So I may wait until she's a bit older to do the matching ones, but she will definitely have her own Christmas pajamas in the box. We also had our magic key to leave out for Santa. We don't have a chimney. So I created like a little hook in our Christmas wreath and she had this magic key that uh, Santa distributed magic keys to lots of different shops. So you can get all these different amazing looking magic keys that Santa's given to all these shops to sell on to people. The one I got was only a pound and it was gold and it's got like a lovely red ribbon. And I actually got a couple of spares. Came from a shop called The Works, which do amazing things like this at Christmas. So I'm really pleased that Santa distributed all these keys that I was able to get one as we don't have a chimney. So we hung this in our wreath so that when Father Christmas arrives, he can get that and let himself in without having to break any windows or like try and squeeze through the letterbox because that's not realistic. In the box were also our stockings to leave out for Father Christmas. And this kind of blows me away slightly. So my partner is, I'd say like seven or eight years older than me. I can't remember the maths right now. And his mum made his stocking. My mum made my stocking in 1987 or 1988, whenever my, I was born in 1987. So yeah, I think it was for my first Christmas, so 1987. She made my stocking. They look bizarrely similar. Like I posted a picture of the, the stockings out and full on Christmas morning and people are like, oh, you made three stockings for the family. I'm like, no, daddies and mummies were already made by our mummies, like seven or eight years apart and they look really similar. It's creepy. So I've been able to make our daughters look like a hybrid of ours. So it does look like I've made three coordinated stockings. Like it's fate clearly was meant to be with this amazing man. And we've set the precedent. I let Santa know how we, that we'd like our stockings left in the sitting room. Uh, Santa always put the stocking at the end of my bed, but then I was like, always when I went to sleep, I'd be like hunching up my knees because I'd be worried that I'd like knock my stocking off the floor and things would break or that Santa would wake me up and then I'd see him. And then that ends the magic because once you've seen Santa, he stops giving you presents. So I was like, always very panicky about that so I let Santa know and I said Felicity and us would really like if you could leave our stockings downstairs so nothing gets broken um, including the magic. One of the few Christmas traditions that snuck in in my adult years was when my sister had her kids my mum would read them the night before Christmas. My, my sister has our family copy of the night before Christmas and she did offer for me to have it um, some like we could alternate Christmases, but I thought it'd be really nice for Felicity to have one of her own. And my sister's kids know that book now, that's important to them and Granny read it to them. So I didn't want to take that away from them. Granny's not with us anymore.
So Granny's not with us anymore, but I really wanted to keep that tradition alive. And once Felicity is a little bit older, I will explain to her that this was something that Granny got to do with her cousins and that she would have loved to have had a chance to do it with Felicity, but that she's up in heaven watching her when I do it with her. But to make it extra special, I've also created this giant Christmas quilt. So we got the Christmas quilt out and we snuggled under it and we read the book. And she was quite small, so she got a bit fidgety towards the end of the book. And hopefully we'll get through the whole book without her trying to pull it apart this year. But, and it did take quite a long time to make, but I started it really early. And it's something I won't have to do this year. I've, I've got a couple of little bits I never quite finished last year, but literally like little stitches in between the corners. I'm sure there's like a professional term for that, but I'm not like a quilt maker or anything. But it was something really fun that that I will be able to say that mummy made this for you and that she'll be able to keep for a long time and hopefully it won't wear too badly because I I made it and it's only going to be used like for a couple of days every year so it should last a long a long time because it's not going to be used very much each year. So our family have a Christmas tradition which is Christmas bingo and every year at Christmas dinner uh, between the main course and uh, letting that go down for a big Christmas pud um, we play bingo and the prizes are all pretty awful. Um, sometimes personal and pretty awful uh, and very cheesy but something to make each of us laugh and uh, we make sure everybody gets a prize. Turning food into a tradition is another great option because again it makes things slightly easier that you always know what's coming up and in our food video about Christmas food I discussed this with professional chef and she does the same things every year because she's she's very very busy in December obviously with her work side of things as well as a professional chef and it just means that these are like the special Christmas time things they they do seafood on Christmas Eve we do a ham on Christmas Eve like you're then not having to spend loads of time overthinking and over complicating and you could add maybe like one different recipe and you could do the, the carrots slightly differently or the sprouts slightly differently if you want a little bit of a change. But I've put all our recipes from last year together and I had some, some recipes for some baked goods that I used as gifts and I've put them all together and I put them away with the Christmas decorations. So when I get the Christmas decorations out, I've got the recipes as well. So it's really important that you pick the right traditions for you. For example, we're a Christian family. so. Going to church on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day is an important tradition for us. But if you're not Christian, then that might not fit. Or you might find those services a bit overwhelming and not want to get involved with them. But you might want to maybe do like Christmas karaoke or something. It's finding the ones that are really going to be important to you that makes you willing to put the effort in to achieve them. If these are Christmas traditions that your whole family know, not only are you going to get them excited about Christmas and the festive season, but they're also going to be more willing to get involved and help achieve these things. If they know that Christmas dinner is always a certain way, then they're going to be more involved with the process and you can share the workload a little bit, which is always nice around Christmas time. So it's no secret that I love planning and the further you prepare these in advance the better. I've tried to do ones that I did a lot of the work for last year. This year to implement them is going to require very little effort. So maybe you haven't got enough time for this year but now you can think about and execute some stuff maybe in July next year in time for next Christmas. So I hope this has inspired you to create some family traditions of your own. Maybe you want to go back to your parents or grandparents and see if they remember what things were important when you were growing up. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again. Oh,